here, I'm Ann Medina, and welcome to History on Film, a discovery of our past through the movies. Our film is a true story based upon court transcripts, actual interviews, and news footage. It's also the recreation of years, yes, years, of searching and questioning in pubs and back alleys in the flats of Northern Ireland. But the investigators weren't police, they were television reporters. The ones with the badges were the targets. It's a kind of Watergate investigation, only a deep throat is missing. In 1974, there was a bombing that killed 21 people in Birmingham, England. Six men were quickly arrested and soon convicted and sentenced to life imprisonment. The film we're about to see recreates the trail journalists followed to reverse that verdict. This was the 1970s, the era of bloody Sundays and bloody Fridays where IRA bombs exploded first throughout Northern Ireland and then spreading into mainland Britain. So when the Birmingham bombs went off, the IRA was the obvious instigator. But there were differences this time. The IRA didn't claim credit as they usually did. And the IRA insisted that None of the six men arrested were members. But then again, a warning had been issued with a secret IRA code so the police would know it was for real. So who did it? Was it an IRA operation gone terribly wrong? Well, watch to see how close the reporters came to finding the true bombers. Who bombed Birmingham? The following program contains violence. Viewer discretion is advised. Anybody want to tell me what's going on? November the 21st, 1974. The body of an IRA man, James McDade, killed planting a bomb the previous week, leaves the West Midlands for Belfast. Holy bastards! A few hours after these scenes, two Birmingham pubs were blown up by the IRA. The six men convicted of the bombings, the biggest mass murder in British history, were caught within hours of the explosions, five of them heading for McDade's funeral in Belfast. One dead bomber on his way back to Belfast. Public patience well and truly strained. And for our next piece of popular television. Spring 1985. Freelance journalist and prospective Labour MP Chris Mullin asked World in Action to reconsider the case of the Birmingham bombings. Mullin, together with researcher Charles Tremaine and programme producer Ian McBride, have re-examined the case against the convicted men. Tonight, we present the results of their investigation. The story Hang begins on. with... Hang on! We want the men who blew them up. Or didn't, depending on your point of view. Yeah, that's the ones. The Birmingham Six. Guilty, Your Honour, and not a mark on them. Right, lads, get your bags packed. You're off to a funeral.
Where's your train? Oh, well, there's plenty of time. I'll pick up the others and get a bus set. See you Sunday. Yeah. Bye, love. See is all right. New Street. Where have you been? Where have you been? The train's gone. No, we're all right. There's another one yet. Come on. Let's go and get ourselves sorted out. I'm crossing over to Belfast tonight. I'm looking for a lift to the station. Oh, well, try the bus, Paddy. Ah, come on. Five minutes. My mates will think I'm not coming. Substantially, it does. The pubs are just across the street. They plant the bombs. Quick drink at the station. Off to the funeral. Five escape to Belfast. One stays behind to phone the warning. Forget about the warning. I'm talking about the bombs. I think the warning's rather interesting. The guys get convicted because they confessed, right? So... Mulberry Bush. Confession number one has the bomb here by the jukebox. Confession number two has two bombs, not actually in the pub, but along the outside wall here and here. Real to go, Charles. Just a sec. It doesn't make sense. Any minute now, there's going to be a huge bloody hole in the floor telling us precisely where the bomb was planted. None of the so-called confessions are even close. I'll show you. It's here, to the left of the bar. At the end of the day, it's not where the bombs were planted, but who put them there. I thought the idea was to prove that none of the six did. Sure, but if they didn't plant the bombs, then somebody else did. They wouldn't need to study this lot to find the right place. They'd know. The cold word is double hex. There is a bomb planted in the rotunda. And there is a bomb in New Street. At the tax office. The cold word is double hex. Six minutes without a mention of the pubs. What's the point of a six minute warning? Hang on, this thing's not working. You're the insurance guy? No. 
Prince Malik. Dublin tells a tale about the warning. Not sure he'll talk, but it might be worth a shot. Where did you find him? Well, the six have been banged up for 11 years. A lot of IRA bombers would be rather surprising if they hadn't picked up a few names. I bet they remember a few coppers as well. Seventeen dead. We're still counting. Oh, Jesus, wet! What are they doing down there? Dr. Scoos is doing his tests. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. You dirty 
dirty Merge and IRA bastard. You got jelly on your hands. Who says it? It's the scientist. This was at Morecambe, where you were in charge, and all five said that they were assaulted while they were in custody there. I've never heard about that. Eight days of the trial were taken up with it. The men's defence of the confessions were beaten out of them. One confessed in Morecambe, where you were in charge, incidentally. The others in Birmingham. You gave evidence. Twice. Yes, yes. It's just that... Uh, it's quite some time ago, isn't it? Did you have much contact with George Reed? I'm not sure I can remember our exact... Uh... Well, I would have explained that there was no question of the Birmingham squad seeing the men until the forensics had been completed. That was when we first suspected. Uh... I merely ask because there's some confusion about the times the interviews took place. I see. It certainly seems we're going into this very thoroughly. What exactly is this programme you're making? It's a documentary for Granada Television to mark the 10th anniversary of the trial. We're talking to people involved in the case. I'm not a policeman. You were on duty, Friday the 22nd. No, I wasn't. Oh, yes, you were. We've spoken to the sergeant who relieved you. You got the wrong block, mate. Do you think we could step inside a minute? Look, take my word for this. The right men are inside. And if you ask me, they can count themselves lucky. Any other country, they would have been shot. Yes. Let's give it another go. He's lying. He's bigger than you are, Chris. Save your energy. They're even bigger in Birmingham. I was sitting in this cell, and this copper came in. Big guy. And he comes up to me, and he kicks me in the chest. Then he jumps on me, grabs a blanket, puts it over my face, leaning all the time like he was trying to smother me. Several times during the day, I could hear other guys screaming. I wasn't really interested in the funeral. I was off to see my mother. And we missed the first train, had a drink at the station bar. And there's me being kicked around the walls. According to the police, you were interviewed again on the Friday. You denied knowing the others. There were no other assaults on me at Morgan. Billy got the worst. You're saying the interview never happened? I wasn't seen again till we were back in Birmingham. That's when the guns came out. And it was near midnight by the time I signed the confession. Not the afternoon, like they said. I'd not eat since breakfast the previous day and hadn't slept for two nights. But I could see it was dark. Times again. None of the times had up. Can I get you a tea or something? What? Now he'll fix you up. He's heard all this before. Uh, no, I'm fine. Uh, if you'd... I realise this must be difficult. That's all right. First couple of years was the worst. Felt a lot of hate. But I'm quite an easy now. Now I've learned to say my prayers. If I hard not to crack, I'll need to get it right. You bored with policemen, or do you fancy chatting to George? George? Reed. This is another George you think might help. Oh, how did you? Oh, that is excellent, Charles. Two minutes, I'll just get this coffee. This is your Dublin man? No, 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 that's another man. Drives a van. Left Birmingham in a bit of a hurry.
The RRA never claimed responsibility for the pubs, of course, but we knew it was him. For a start off, whoever rang the warning to the Birmingham Mail knew the IRA code, so he was obviously connected. And there'd been quite a number of bomb incidents before the pub, so in that sense, the West Midlands was geared up for it. I've uh, got a CV here. There's um, one or two other cases. A34 murders is probably the most well known, I don't know. Yes, that's useful. We're obviously focusing on the pubs, but anything that would help us give a flavour of your career, photographs, mementos... Why do you think that they confessed so readily? I don't think that's true. Only four of them actually signed, didn't they? And Paddy Hill never put his name to a statement. He's the little stocky guy, isn't he? That's right. I think I can help you with Hill. We're treading a very thin line here, Chris. Don't look so suspicious. Well, I ask you, it's 11 o'clock in the morning. What am I supposed to do with this? Make it sound like we're doing the life and times of George Reed. What do you expect me to do? Ask him if they saw anyone bang their heads against the wall. I thought you were interested in the phone call. I am. This will give you an idea of Hill's mentality. It's some sort of top ten, I think. Up goes or it's under. In the year 2525, we'll get out. Read it if you can. Man sitting in the dock facing 21 murder charges and you fall around like that. You can forget all those stories about violence. Hill was covered in jello night and he knew it. You see it in his face. Where'd you get him? One of the daughters. She had a load of stuff in the attic. Nice girl. Jesus. Uh, not too pretty, is it? Strangely enough, one of the first things I put my hands on was an old letter from World in Action. Grave cause for concern, but sorry, no program. Which is appropriate in the circumstances. Mm. You don't seem your usual cheerful self, Ian. Well, there's no show in a few retired coppers saying they've heard a bit of shouting, is there? Which, unless you've got George Reed locked in a toilet dictating his memoirs, is all we've got. He'll go on camera. And do what? We've got no evidence, Charlie. Talk about the 834 murders, I imagine. These are prison photos. Nobody disputes they were beaten up in prison. Well, this one is. They both are. Police photos of Polaroids. <sighs> Great. I haven't even got the right pictures. I think we're going about this the wrong way. Skews says that two of them have got gelignite on their hands. He's a scientist. It's a fact. Even if we could prove the guys were forced to sign confessions, we've still got to explain the forensics. Well, don't look at me. You're the one with the chemistry O-level. Something else must produce the same result. Exactly. So we commission a couple of independent scientists to double-check the tests. I'm happy to take it on, but I'll need the time to do it. OK. Granada paying for this, huh? Is it me, or do his eyes glaze over every time I open the mouth? What's he up to? Judging from his notebook, I'd say he's looking for the bombers. There were eight and nine bombings immediately before the pubs. RAF club, tax office, conservative club, including the one that killed McDade. My guess is the unit I'm looking for have been involved in earlier bombings. I can't see that this is an operation for new recruits. Listen, you start messing around with the IRA, you're going to end up in a ditch. The Dublin guy is an obvious suspect. Even the police would concede that. Arrested after the bombs, 12 years for conspiracy. Two others seem to have got away. Someone called Belfast Jimmy and another man who drives a van. The only names I know are the bastards who spent the afternoon sticking a cigar in my eyelid. We were framed. They had to get someone inside. When those bombs were planted, 
I was in a car park trying to bum a lift. Now I've been left in here to die. And we're still waiting on the IRA to admit they've done it. You'll get nothing out of them. We were walking in the prison yard. A man comes up to me and he says, I'm sorry to see you lads in here. Nothing went right that night. Those are the exact words. Nothing went right. Then he said about the phone box. Broken. He said if I didn't keep my mouth shut, he'd have my wife and kids shot. Are you sure he's out? Goblin. What about Belfast Jimmy? Can you put a name to him? Short. Got a scar. I don't know if he was IRA or not. I was doing raffles. Prisoners' dependents. A lot of families have men in turn back home. He was one of the guys running things. But if he was in charge of fundraising... I don't know. I just handed over the money, asked no questions. That was how I got to know most of those fellas. The same with the van driver. Teresa always said I'd get in trouble mixing with that crowd. She was right, wasn't she? Hi, honey. How long have you been on open visits? A few years. I'm the IRA brigadier who organized the biggest mass murder in British history. I bet there's a few people who think I get things a bit soft, eh? Do you want to tell me about this? It's a flag killer. Right. Then this must be a beef burger. No, it's fine. I'll wait. Right, where were we? So we're at the station, having a few drinks. There's beer and guns slopped all over the tables. And we all know how easy it is to reach out for your pint and come up with all kinds of stuff to stick into your fingers. Beer, fag ash, bits of varnish. Yes, yeah, so we got all the main ones, paint, lacquer and so on. I just wanted to check if it was used in anything else. You know something, Charlie? I'm starting to dream about these guys. And they're getting a lot older. Sorry, did you say paper? What about playing cards? Jesus Christ, playing cards. That's me stuffed. What do we do if this works? Keep quiet about it. Which means Mullen doesn't get it for his book until I say so. You sure about this IRA thing? I assumed you talked about it. Talked about getting an interview. Jerry Adams, the ex-boss, whoever was in charge at the time. He didn't tell me he was going looking for... Excuse me, did you do the pop bombers? Ah, oh, thank Christ, you came along. I'm going to die at the gathers off my chairs. What's he going to do if he finds them? Ask them if they did it. Yeah, you there? Yes, yes, I understand. Yes, but if I'm to come to Dublin, then it's got to be soon. These men have got wives and families, and the longer we wait, then the long... Hang on. You know, the more I think about it, the crazier it seems. I mean, all, all right, nobody was exactly queuing up to defend the guys, but having taken the job on, why not run your own tests? Scoos says he was only 99%, so... Pace is high. Well... I suppose 99% is pretty convincing, isn't it? Well, it's easy with hindsight. If I'd been approached at the time, I'd have said there was no point. It's always been a perfectly adequate screening test. Until your friend here arrived with his box of groceries. You ever have any contact with Dr. Skews? He's still working at Chorley, isn't he? The rumour is he's been taken off active duties since we wrote off for the formula. Start counting. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, there you are. You're a bomber now.
Boss. your answer? Police Polaroid prison photograph. Now, nobody's going to dispute these guys had seven sorts of shite kicked out of them in prison. So if anybody tries to accuse the police of beating them up, they just blame it on the prison officers. But, according to the experts, some of these bruises are visible on the police Polaroid. Here, look, see the marks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're in business. You. This uh, Irish story, is it? We're in business. Mullins off to see the men in dark glasses. You're going with him. What? The man's a parliamentary candidate, for Christ's sake. Word gets round. He's wandering around Ireland having secret meetings with terrorists. We'll never get this show on the air. Now, you're Irish, Eamon. You know the ground. I want an interview. That's all. An official IRA spokesman. I don't want Mullen messing things up, chasing bombers for his book. No names. That's his only condition. There's a couple of others. Van driver in Portlease Prison. Sorry, way before my time. Anyone you want to see, you've got my number. I let them know we've no objections. But I can't make them talk. There's a few of the Dublin Own Guard don't have much time for the present leadership. Us. We don't have much time for them. anything you don't want to tell me, then just say so. I might press you, but uh, frankly, I'd rather hear nothing than be given false information. You're wasting your time, Mr. Mullen. The Brits will never release them, not till there's a settlement. You know they're innocent. There's a war going on. Innocent people get hurt. So why agree to talk? Ask the man who brought you here. He's the politician. I'm trying to piece together the bombing campaign. The actual process. I'm assuming that there is some kind of routine. Though, obviously, the pubs are different from anything that went before. Just another night. When nothing went right. We can be criticised for bungling the warning. But the police should have cleared the people instead of gone for the bombs. Any sane person would have done that. And the bomb squad was tied up at the funeral. That was the problem. What about the phone? What about it? I was told it was broken. Whoever rang the warning had to find another one. And that'll explain the delay, then. Johnny Walker claims 
There were three people responsible for the pubs. I don't know his source of information. I don't know whether it's accurate, but... I believe one of them is now in Port Leash Prison. No comment. Is he right about the numbers? More or less. Three? Depends what you're counting. Bomb maker. Planted. Someone to ring the warning. Driver. I can't see that three is enough. The pubs are next to each other. You're saying no driver? I'm saying you've got your sums wrong. It takes two to make up a bomb. One man makes the circuit, the other checks it. it doesn't take long, 20 minutes. We can make the circuits at home. What about planters? Two. So, four men in all. Uh, can I just press you about the warning? If the phone was broken, then, I mean, wouldn't the person who rang the warning have The to phones were checked at four o'clock, two of them, right next to each other. Come five to eight, they were broken, but it didn't take long to find another. They still had time. You certain of that? You asked to see me. Yes. I think you were involved. Possibly with this guy, Belfast Jimmy. But until I find out his name, I can't be certain if he was at the airport. Oh, wait a minute. I don't know where Johnny Walker got his information. He was never a member of the IRA. None of them were. The IRA look after their own. And those men have had no help from us. No volunteer would go out on an operation like that and then catch the first train to Belfast. I'm not saying mistakes weren't made, but ours were nothing compared to the Brits. The day I got lifted, one of the unit was in my house. His van was parked outside the door. I'm upstairs being questioned. He's down there talking to my missus. That's stupid. Very stupid. Just put your book away a minute and I'll tell you something else. I don't like you, Mr. Moore. You're a member of the British Labour Party. And that makes you a member of the establishment just like them. No names. Okay. But uh, let me be clear about what you're saying. There were four people responsible for the pubs. Two makers, two planters, and we've agreed that you're one of them. Correct. And you're not prepared to say more than that? Correct. And the guy with the van was another? In Port Leash? I slipped up there, didn't I? He's asking about the pubs. Do you want me to tell him who gave the orders? One last question. How did you feel about the casualties? I'm a soldier. Set. Joe Cahill's going to do the talking. One of the Dublin leaders now retired. He'll admit responsibility and confirm that the six weren't members. That's what I want to hear. Chris? No idea. He said he was going shopping. They made a lot of inquiries about the six Birmingham men. No way were those people connected. It was IRA volunteers who carried out those operations. Some people would say it's very easy for you to sit here and say that. The IRA have got to look to their credibility. If a statement is made and found to be wrong, then their credibility is nil. So, what would have happened to the people who actually did carry out the bombings? I am the 
I don't have a clue. I don't know the people who carry them out. I don't know their names or anything like that. I make that very clear. Cut. Look, it's only an interview. I don't believe you. You've got the IRA in there. No, no, they're Sinn Féin. I might be Italian, but I am not stupid. Mullen can crack this lot. He's a better man than I am. I would be a tall surprise the Brits don't them pose themselves. They knew the kind of bombs we used. They even knew the colour of my van. Listen, there is no way our unit were involved. The warnings we gave were always done by two men. We didn't piss about with broken phones. We checked them out first. And they were checked. Four o'clock. I also heard that you were involved along with a man called Belfast Jimmy. Listen. You plant bombs in pubs, people are going to get killed. There's nothing to give a warning about. Look, I was the adjutant in Birmingham. I know what went on. And you see an operation like that? Completely outside everything we believed in. We're not terrorists, Mr. Mullen. I hold life very highly. Mind you, I'm not saying a council of one or two people were at risk. But the pubs? Yeah. You're in here for life. On your own admission, you'll never be released. If you weren't involved, why leave Birmingham six weeks later? I had a visit from the branch. Were you questioned about other bombings? Yeah. You're wasting your time over here. We're not terrorists, Mr. Mullen. We have an expert who's examined both sets of photographs and is of the opinion that the marks could have been put there before Winston Green. I've seen the two sets of photographs, and in the first, well, I couldn't see any marks at all. So, two solicitors, an eminent independent expert, and the six men themselves are all either wrong or they're lying. Well, I'm saying they're wrong. I'm not going... I can't categorically say they're lying, but you see, if that's the case then, if they're right, there's a lot of forensic scientists and a lot of eminent physicians that are also lying. Cut. Thank you, gentlemen. It's a wrap. of the tests you have carried out. People could be playing cards, taking a drink, which would give a positive result, which could be misinterpreted as explosives. Well, the marks could have been caused by a fist, boot, flat surface, even a stick, anything that doesn't cut. The six men denounce the IRA. They denounce shootings. That is not the action of IRA men. What I would do if I were Home Secretary and I received a document like the one you produced is I would summon a Home Office meeting and say, now, on the face of it, this seems to me to amount to a uh, case for referring the matter to the Court of Criminal Appeal. Two makers, two planters, not six, four. I thought you were going to get Paddy out of here. There's no secrets in Britannia's dungeons, Mr. Mullen. He's told me what you're up to. Who exactly are you after? Someone to tell me how the bombs were planted. There's not many people would know that. No. Only two, I believe. Give me your number before you leave. She gets lonely out there without me. I don't understand. Jenkins was home secretary. He says we should have an appeal. So why is nothing happening? 
that proved the tests were wrong. It's new evidence. We have a right to an appeal. Now, don't get me wrong. It weakens the case against you, but I just don't think it'll be enough. The only way to be certain is to find the real woman. I've been on my knees to the IRA in here, begging them to get Ward back to help you. Ask him. Why won't they give us the truth drug? The lay detector? What are they frightened of? I need the planters. Now, I may have met one of them, I don't know. All I can do is work through everyone picked up after the pubs. Now, they're fairly widely scattered, so it's going to take some time, I'm afraid. But at least it means that it's going to be difficult for them to set me up. You're a stubborn we get. Anyone lose a finger on you? I'll be all right. Richard McElkenny's brothers offered to drive me around. Look, um, I'll come back in a while if you don't mind. I feel a bit conspicuous sitting around here. Are you sure you're going to be okay? He knows I'm coming. Give me an hour. Said they were gonna do me for the pub bombs. They showed us a big pile of papers. Said it was evidence against me. So I says, in that case, the six you've got must be innocent. What kind of evidence? Just trying it on, you know. Trying to force me into making a statement. But you got the impression that they knew they got the wrong man. Right. And you knew that they were innocent. Oh, well. I knew they weren't in Sinn Féin or anything. So it didn't come as any surprise to you that they threatened to charge you. You said that they were going to charge you with the pub bombs. I'm trying to understand what the police were up to. If, as you said, they believed that they got the wrong guys, then anyone arrested later... Sure, everyone knows the Birmingham Six are innocent. The Brits did it themselves. Murdered their own people to make things look bad for us. I don't know nothing about the pub bombs. Talk to the boys who did the Conservative Club. They'll tell you all about it. Can you give me their names? I, I think I've got most of them already, man. Might help. I think that's your car, I hear, mister. It's easy enough for me, man, living over here. I wouldn't have seen that much of Richard anyway. It's the women's had it bad. Chasing around every time the man get moved. I can't teach them anything about waiting. You have to keep trying. That's all you can do. Every day I wake up, it's on my mind. My brother's in prison for a crime he didn't commit. You don't have to think about it. It's there. It's the same for all the families. Mind you, we've had great support over the years. Campaign groups, MPs. But at the end of the day, it comes back to us. Sure, I'll be able to. Don't you worry about us. It's justice for the man, that's all we want. I need to see him again. Ten minutes, five minutes. I, I don't care where, but soon. I 
seen the man in Portlaoise prison. He denies being involved. I think he's lying. But he also said that the warnings are always given by two men. Now, I need to get the process straight. He's lying. Then I don't understand. There was only one person responsible for the warning, and only one place to which the message was going. I phoned the warning as soon as the planters reported back. What was the code? Double X, that was the code for the whole period. The police knew it. And no driver? Not for the planting? Not to collect the explosives? The explosive was stored in a rented lockup. The bombs were made there. I made them up. What about the planters? No comment. Any of the men who bombed the Conservative Club involved? No comment. Any of them ever arrested? No comment. I'm asking you to reconsider. Look, there are six men sitting in jail for a crime that they never committed. They're all Tories round here, love. I'd save me breath. I've done my time. It's all behind me now. I don't like talking about it. OK, let's make a deal. Tell me something that'll convince me that you weren't involved. I'll leave you alone for good. I drove James and McDay to Coventry when he blew himself up. 22 plastic bags they needed for what was left. I was in no state to go anywhere. Never mind plant a bomb the following week. There was another unit out. The night I went for Chainsy. A conservative club. Know where I can find them? I know where one of them is. It's ten years. I have to check it. Mr. Mullin, you don't know me. I'm a probation officer. The prisoner you spoke to last week with Paddy Hill has asked me to give you this address in Ireland. You don't give up, do you? I'm headed that way later. I'll drop right and let them know we've no objections. Leave it to the three. I was amazed some of the things we used to get away with. Sitting in pubs singing rebel songs. Police cars parked across the street. Because I was terrified of being picked up. You couldn't be sure who was saying what. So I kept my head down for a while. Dropped out. You all right sitting there? Yeah, I'm fine. She doesn't know about any of this. My wife and me. She thought I was nicking the stuff. Aye. Right. Come in from work one time. She'd find a bag under the bed. Bits and pieces for incendiaries. There's maybe a couple of watches in there or something. I let on with stolen gear. Fool your wife, you can fool anyone. You got involved again. I met a guy on the bus one night. He said we should get together. I think he'd been over here and sent back to reorganize. I went along. Put in charge of a unit. 
suppose I've done about uh, seven ops altogether. Me and another fella. The cinema and the Bristol Road. One or two furniture shops. That one, the diffused. The conservative club. That's the night that McDade was killed. 14th of November. I can't, uh, I'm not really sorry, uh, this is the first time, uh, There were two conservative clubs. One on November the 5th, second on the 14th, the week before the pops. I hear right. I knew something big. I knew something big was going to happen. They told us to stay at home that night. Keep quiet. I think you were in the pubs. just told me it was needed for another op. Gave us the gun and a bag. The other bomb is in a suitcase of some sort. Behind the sofa. I was told to be a proper one. Kept asking. I'm not making excuses. If they said we're going to kill people, there's no way it would have gone. The guy told me the objective was the Rotunda. He said the one in the taverns for the tax office, the other ones for the Rotunda. But I don't, I don't, I don't know who made the bombs. We picked them up from the adjutant's house. So we're just sitting there, behind the sofa. We walked into town, did the tavern first. I got the drinks in, the other guy found a seat. I was shitting myself. We left the bomb in the corner, by the seats. We should go down the stairs. Show me. No. Staircase is the wrong way around. Just put across. Convicted on each of 21 counts. On the clearest and most overwhelming evidence I have ever heard of the crime of murder. In respect of each count, each one of you is now sentenced for life. from Birmingham to Dublin. Could you give me the name of the man you were with? I give you my word it won't be published. No offense. I never want to see you again.
Hello. Uh, Jeremy Lewis, please. Chris Mullen. Uh, <laughs> no bad news, I'm afraid. I want to rewrite the last two chapters. Can't name them, of course. No, I intend to lead a long and happy life, even if it's only to fight the next election. Should give the Home Secretary something to think about. Has there been any official reaction yet? I'm told that he has sent both chapters to the Chief Constable. Word is, they're saying there's nothing in the book that constitutes new evidence. Though quite what they're digging up in the process is anybody's guess. One or two coppers I can work on if you want to find out. Otherwise, there's a review in here in the cookery page. You're famous. Be a few lurking doubts in the nation's kitchens tonight. The nationals are rather good. I've had a few handshakes at the house. Anyone important? I'm supposed to meet the minister at the home office tomorrow. Apparently, my presence is no longer required. Uh, do you need any of this? Oh, Charles. No. no. Chris, it's a great book. Something's bound to give. Can the minister categorically say that there is no connection between this case and Dr. Skews's sudden retirement at the age of 50? Why is the minister reluctant to meet Mr. Mullen? Yeah. <clears throat> it uh, took the West Midlands police three days to decide they had the guilty men. Why has it taken the Home Office nine months to consider, without reaching a conclusion, whether the West Midlands was right. I can't believe that the delay is because of the thoroughness of the Home Office and the police force. Therefore, I must ask if it was a cover-up. Even with the advanced copy of Mr. Mullins' book, it has only been a matter of a few weeks that we have had the fresh evidence. Apart from anything else, it would be disrespectful, yeah, 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 yeah. given the amount of work that has gone into it, if the matters that were new within it were not subject to full and careful consideration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next business, please. There's a debate on aspirin next. I expect he could use a couple. <laughs> You'd better come and see me. I thought you'd like to satisfy yourselves that I wasn't having you on. People fabricate all kinds of things to advance their case. I don't think anyone is questioning your motives. The alternative is that I've been set up by the IRA. Now, I've gone to a great deal of trouble to ensure that that's not the case, of course. You'll note that most of the people concerned had no warning of my arrival on their doorstep, including the man who planted the bombs. But I concede that it's a possibility you might want to examine. If not, I think you have to accept the fact that the convictions look decidedly unsafe. <laughs> 
The British state is big enough to own up to its mistakes, Chris. If these men are innocent, they'll be released. Let me be quite clear about that. A minister is only a custodian. We all pass on and others assume the responsibilities of office. We really must do what is right. I take it you'd be willing to be interviewed by the West Midlands police? Of course. Should I bring a lawyer? Sorry, I didn't get the lady's name. Gareth Pierce. Mrs. Pierce is Paddy Hill's lawyer. I was anxious to have an independent record of this meeting. Yes, yes, I think we all know why we're here. X, Y, Belfast, Jimmy, let's get them out of the way to start with. We're satisfied we know who they are. Mick Murray, convicted of other bombing offences, 1975. He's your first maker, and the man you claim rang the warning. James Francis Gavin, formerly of Carlton Road, Borsley Green, nine prison in the Republic. Second maker. And Belfast Jimmy, Seamus McLaughlin, the man in charge. Gavin was arrested in connection with other explosions, but we had nothing positive on him. How are we doing? Before we go on, perhaps you could clarify the nature of this meeting. At the moment, Mr. Mullin, we're being led here by the neck by the Home Secretary. I don't mind telling you. I'm simply instructed to inform him of my views. You've been busy. So have you. Not really. I'm interested in the planters. Tell me about the young one. Was he ever convicted? I can't say. When you get to him, you're down to five, six people. They'd be very upset. Nevertheless, this is the one I want to hone in on. There were no numbers ever put on the bombers, but if this man's account is true, then obviously the six are innocent. There's at least one I know of fits the bill. But I can't be certain unless you confirm he was convicted. I think it's him. There's a limited number of candidates. We're going on the age. 19 at the time. And the details of other bombings. It's essential we try and corroborate this. I'm no more at liberty to disclose my sources than you are yours. What you don't realise is how many of the people you've been talking to were singing the heads off for us. Then they will have told you that the six were not members of the IRA. After the pub bombs, they were singing to save their own necks, believe me. We picked a few up the following year. I expect you've seen one of them. What about the second planter? Zed. You say very little about him. There's a limited number of candidates. One. Michael Christopher Hayes. You haven't answered my question. Am I to understand that the police now accept that the six were not members of the IRA? We never said there were. Yes, you did. According to the police at the trial, Walker was a brigadier. McElkenny a captain and the other four lieutenants. I can give you chapter and verse on that. Perhaps you care to name a single bombing that was carried out by people who weren't in the IRA. That's not in my remit. Superintendent Maffin is remarkably well informed. I don't want to know, Chris. Anonymous confessions aren't evidence. It won't get the six back into court. Yes, but you do realize that if he's right, and I'm not saying that he is, it would mean that the police have known who planted the bomb for some considerable time. I had a load of this, Home Office. I'm sorry to say there was an error in the information provided to World in Action scientists. 
the strength of the caustic soda solution was given as 1%. Subsequently, when further inquiries were made about Dr. Skews's method, it became apparent the concentration used was almost certainly, almost certainly, mind, 0.1% and not 1%. Good, eh? Gets forensics off the hook. 1% works with playing cards. You can bet your sweet life that 0.1% won't. No. Who do they think they are? Talk about shifting the goalposts. It's for me, Tom Clark. Yes, policeman, I think. So when did you leave the force, then, Mr. Clark? I uh, thought we'd covered everybody. Oh, well, gentlemen, thereby hangs a tale. I was accused of stealing five pounds from a prisoner. I make no secret of it. The jury found me guilty. Though I will protest my innocence till my dying day. They were not allowed to sleep for one minute during their time at Birmingham Police Station. And what with that and the, the dogs barking every two or three minutes, they did not rest. What was the demeanour of the officers in dealing with the prisoners? Very aggressive. Well, you know, uh, can you swear? Yeah, you say anything you want. Uh, Irish bastards, and so on and so forth, all night long. You name it, it was said to them. And, of course, occasionally the guns got put through the flaps on the cell door. God knows what those men went through. With guns aiming at them through the spiral. A shotgun through the door? Periodically, through the night, every time, stand up. And you personally saw that? Yes. Get your white coat on, Charlie. I think we've got another show. Mullins found himself a talking policeman. He's not talking a few shouts either. He's talking guns, dogs, the works. I don't know how he does it. Well, yes, I do know how he does it. He writes to the Birmingham Post. Parliamentary candidate seeks honest copper. Can you believe that? Stop the Christ, this guy's telling the truth. Why the white coat, if you don't mind my asking? Well, you, you, you got your formula wrong, didn't you? Right. And guns. What are you on about? But yeah, yeah, listen, listen to this. The next thing I knew, I had a shotgun pointed at me through the flap in the door. I was continually threatened throughout the night with the shotgun and other handguns. I tell you, Charlie, even Chris is excited about this. <laughs> His eyes were like... You know what like eyes? What did you say? I asked you what you were on about. The forensics. After months of careful research, the Home Office has decided to change the formula. That's ridiculous. It was checked at the trial. So, find out who checked it and get him on camera. Dr. Black, you're convinced that the formula used was 1%. Where did you get that from? It comes from the notes I took when I saw Dr. Skews. Now, I could not have made a mistake. He could not have told me 0.1%, which I transcribed as 1%. What was the state of the men when you next saw them? Well, there were bruises underneath the eyes. Their faces were puffed out. There were physical changes. Physically, they were different men from the Friday night. No question of it. Will the minister confirm that the retirement of Dr. Skews, three days after the World in Action programme, was far from voluntary? Is not this matter being hushed up to avoid a scandal? No, I utterly repudiate any suggestion that this matter has been hushed up. Mellor's getting rattled. First he tells the House that Skews was pensioned off of limited efficiency. Then he says that he retired voluntarily. As for the Home Secretary, it seems that he's been frustrated in his efforts to reach a speedy decision because we keep pestering him with more evidence. I've been ringing around the wives. Love the show, but same old question, when's something gonna happen? Thirteen years soon. Christ knows how they survive. I thought we might press for a decision before the Christmas recess. Spirit of the season and all that. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them a light has shone. For 
To us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On David's throne he will reign, and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness. From this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. As the House will be aware, the safety of these convictions has since been challenged notably in two World in Action programmes and in a book published by Mr Chris Mullin in June last year. I have examined all the material with great care. I am satisfied that there is new evidence that will justify my referring this case to the Court of Appeal and I have now done so. <laughs> Consultation between the Chief Constables of the West Midlands and the Devon and Cornwall forces, the latter force has been asked to undertake further inquiries into the allegations made by Mr. Clark. It's the same old story. Get the police in to crawl all over the evidence and discredit the witnesses. I've never heard an inquiry called the same day a case is referred. At least that's original. So, more policemen. There were bruises underneath the eyes. Their faces were puffed out. There were physical changes. To ask if I would be prepared to give them an interview. The question of whether these men were armed just didn't enter my head. You got this one? Timetable of interviews. Someone will know what it is. Some tea and biscuits. How do you like yours, Jerry? <laughs> Have you heard these two have got religion? Aye. They call him the bishop. Here, Gareth, you better tell us what we're supposed to do here, because I'm not going to sit around all day with these bastards. Whose nick is this, anyhow? I'm still travelling. Is it yours? Might have known. Shade house, this is. No way, Paddy. You'll upset the bishop there. <laughs> I think the lady's waiting to speak. I'd just like to say one thing before we start. We have to be realistic. As far as this appeal is concerned, you're guilty until we prove you're innocent. It's not like an ordinary trial. The evidence is given to three judges, there's no jury. I ought to say that in my experience, an appeal court has an extreme dislike of cases that have been referred as a result of media campaigns, especially television ones. When the time comes, I think we should fill the court with observers. We need all the help we can get. 
I'll ask Nelson Mandela. <laughs> he sent us a postcard the other day. Well, don't ask Reagan. I've written twice. Still waiting. We've had one piece of luck. The police have discovered a record of the times each of you was questioned. It didn't surface at the trial. I think you should study it closely. For some reason, Superintendent Reed has a note of an interview he claims didn't happen. Now this one. Saturday afternoon. They read me out what the holy man here is supposed to have said. I done the pubs. <laughs> Billy shite your trousers power. And then it was back to the lighted cigar on my eyelids. That's the time I gave it the trial. He's crossed it out because he says I confessed in the morning. Well, I confessed to nothing. And I want someone to get that read in the box and ask him what he's playing at. And if no one else wants to do it, I'm going to do it myself. We don't get to speak, Paddy. The barristers do the talking. Sure, Paddy, you've got a good enough case without us. You weren't even at the station on time. No, no, it's the six of us or nothing. I beseech you to guide the judges of this court and to bless the efforts of our barristers. Amen. Amen. My lords, the question being posed is whether among the many victims of the Birmingham bombs, the dead, the injured, and the bereaved, may not also be counted these men, who would have spent 13 years behind bars as innocent men, while those truly guilty will have gone free. Richard. If that is so, the miscarriage of justice will have been one of the gravest in recent times. No sign of Nelson Mandela. Oh, rise! The learned judge, in his summing up, made a number of comments about the enormity of the allegations made against the police. He described their alleged misbehaviour as a conspiracy, which, if true, was unprecedented in the annals of criminal history. He observed that if one officer from the whole lot had reported the matter to some senior officer, Mrs. Lannis. to an independent force, or even to the press, the gaff would have been blown. How did the prisoners look? Very worn out, tired, sort of very rough. Did you see any signs or marks or injuries on any of them? No. I'd been hit, I'd been hammered, I'd been made to sit, I'd been made to stand. Mr. Clark, why did you leave the police force? I was charged with the theft of a five pound note from a prisoner. And after hearing your evidence, did the jury convict you? Yes. And what do you say today? about whether or not you were guilty of that offence. I was not guilty. Now, Mr. Clark, it might be suggested to you that the reason that you said what you have said about events in November 1974 is that you are motivated by a desire to vilify the police. Absolute rubbish. Did you feel angry at having been convicted? Yes. Of course, my lords. Yes. And angry and bitter with the police who prosecuted you? No. No, my lords. No. Bitter copper exacts revenge on his former employees. It's odds on you'll read that in the papers tonight. What about his evidence? Oh, that's ridiculous. I mean, 13 years on, the guy's going to forget the odd detail. The point is, he says he saw guns and dogs. I wonder if they're going to allow George Reed the benefit of a bad memory. 
Well, at least he has the advantage that he wrote everything down on paper. Mr. Reed, what you were doing at the time of the interviews, you are playing around on a piece of paper to make the interviews fit together. Later, when we come to Hill, you were trying to work out when it was going to be suggested that Hill had confessed. Do I make myself clear? You make yourself plain, but that is not true. In other words, you were fabricating the evidence at the time of these people's arrests. Could you, for my benefit, I'm sorry to be so dim, explain what it is you are suggesting this witness did arising from the document. This document was being prepared for a number of reasons. Now, the first reason in relation to Hill was that the officers had to work out and carefully work out when it was going to be suggested at the trial later that Hill wait, had wait confessed. A wait, wait a minute. When it was going to be suggested that Hill had confessed, or rather had made admissions, to be more precise. You do not need a schedule for that. You do not need a schedule. Go on. May I make it clear why you need a schedule? You have to have a schedule like this if you're being dishonest, is the suggestion. So, this is a blueprint for a completely false case to be put forward by the police witnesses of the trial. That is right. And it successfully hoodwinked everybody. Mr. Reed, just coming back to you, what is this entry all about? Well, I can't tell you. Not at the moment. Your position, then, in charge of the inquiry was this, was it not? But it was all very properly handled. Is that right? Yes. No violence, no intimidation, no threats, no guns, no dogs, nothing. That is right. All done according to the book. Yes. So, it appeared as though you got six men, giving you a lot of detail in some cases, though not much in others, as to one, their movements, and two, the fact that they had done it. That is right, yes. But the detail dries up when it comes to the actual planting of the bombs, does it not? In the statements? There's not much in these statements about... Uh, very little, no. So... As the officer in charge... To which <laughs> ground of appeal is this directed? I don't seem to be very interested in the planting, do they? I get the impression the judges are interrupting the defence barristers rather more than they're troubling the Crown. Perhaps there's too many people watching. In my experience, when the British own up to a mistake, they prefer to do it in private. I must hope for a miracle. Think I'll slip away. It's still with forensics, Chris. They can't get around that. We'll see. I don't think that Dr. Skews can usefully contribute to our knowledge about the planting of the bombs. Should you need me, I'll be in Dublin. We're walking later here. I know it. It's the Irish Times, Jerry. They believe we're innocent. Tell him, Gareth. Jerry thinks he's going home. Maybe he's right. The policewoman, Joyce Linus, is going to change her evidence. I answered the phone. I don't usually give my name and number when I answer. The person on the other end said, is that Mrs. Linus? I said, yes. He said, don't forget you have children. Did you say anything? I asked who it was and there was no answer. When you appeared before their lordships last week, did you tell this court all the evidence which you could have given? No. Why did you not? I was too frightened to. 
What did you omit to tell this court on the last occasion? That there were armed officers with guns in the cell block area. On one occasion when I went to one of the interview rooms upstairs, I saw one of the defendants being assaulted. What did you see? When the door was opened, one of the defendants was standing up. There were at least three officers in the room. There was one in front of the man and one on either side. As the door opened, one of the officers said something and then kneed the man in the groin while the other two held his arms. Did you hear what was said or the effect of what was said? He said, this is what we do to fucking murdering bastards. Forensics. Everything you could possibly need. Not how 1% suddenly became 0.1%. My money's on the policewoman. Oh, Chris, incidentally, is in Ireland. Stand by for a last minute appearance by the Lone Ranger. 0.01%. Dr. Skews. Dr. Skews. 1% is in the letter sent by the director of the laboratory to the world in action scientists. You are claiming that 1% is there because you thought his request did not relate to the Birmingham bombings case, but to contemporary use of the formula by the laboratory. He did not tell me he wanted the formula for an appraisal test in the Birmingham bombings. He didn't have to, did he? You have already agreed that the obvious case to which he was referring was the Birmingham case. You have agreed to that. I agree with that. Therefore, if your director is asking about the formula, even at this level, it has got to be about the Birmingham case. It doesn't have to be. But in this case, it was. And you knew that, did you not? Not for certain. 99%? I agree with that. <laughs> One or two things about your book I didn't like, Mr. Mullen. You mentioned my fiance. There was no need to bring her into it. And you had me leaving Birmingham early 75. That's wrong. I stayed on for nearly a year. I'll correct that. You say nothing about the central allegation I make about you in the book that you and the young guy planted the pub bombs. We could talk about it in the third person if it would help. Or if you want to deny it, I'll solemnly write down everything you say and publish it. But I would have to state, I don't believe you. The phones were checked at four o'clock. Collected the bombs at 7.30 from the adjutant's house, Bordsley Green, 23 Carlton Street. He walked into town, gave the young guy the gun. He bought the drinks at the tavern. 
you both with the Margaret Bush. After the planting, the young guy went home. You walked down Didworth, rendezvoused with the maker. When he went to ring the warning, the phone was broken. Both of them. Finally got through just after eight. Minutes later, the first bomb exploded. Three minutes later, the second one went off. The six couldn't tell the police where the bombs were planted because they didn't know. You do. I challenge you to deny it was you. We have not overlooked the fact that the appellants of lead state did not in every respect tally with the scientific evidence as to where the bombs must have been planted. The fact that the admissions do not in all respects tally is perhaps a reason for doubting whether they were concocted by the police. All one can say of Mrs. Linus's evidence is that on one or other of the occasions when she gave evidence before this court, she committed perjury. Ian, stand to there, please. Her reasons for changing her mind were not acceptable. There was nothing in the remark, don't forget, we all have families, which constituted a threat. She demonstrated herself to be a witness who was not worthy of belief. Yes, stand to it, it's Ian. It's bad news, I'm sorry. Mr. Clark was a most unconvincing witness. He's also an embittered man. We have no doubt that the evidence given to us by Thomas Clark, suggesting that his erstwhile colleagues in the West Midlands police force treated these appellants with brutality, was false. With no disrespect, to Mr. Reed, whatever else might be said about him, he was quite clearly not a person who would have been capable of organizing or carrying through such a huge and complicated conspiracy. Indeed, we doubt whether it was a scheme which was capable of being engineered by anybody. As has happened before in references by the Home Secretary to this court, under Section 17 of the Criminal Appeal Act, 1968. The longer this hearing has gone on, the more convinced this court has become that the verdict of the jury was correct. We have no doubt that these convictions were both safe and satisfactory. The appeals are dismissed. have one or two people remain in jail rather than risk the credibility of the legal system by having to own up to a mistake. Give us the name. Rubbish. 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 Will she further agree that nothing discredits our system of justice so much as the widespread notion that some mistakes are too big to own up to? I understand the honourable member may be referring once again to the recent hearing by the Court of Appeal of the case of the Birmingham pub bombings. The Court of Appeal fully examined the defence case and decided that the convictions were sound. The judgment, of course, is fully available to those who wish to read it in detail. <laughs>
You didn't happen to see any West Midland special branch wandering around earlier, did you? One of their files appears to have got mixed up in my post. Vintage 1975. Shut the door a sec. The organization was taken over by Michael Hayes and James Gavin. Both men are believed to have been involved in the Birmingham pub bombings. Hayes said he actually placed one of the bomb. What did you say the date was? 75. It's a complete bloody account of the Birmingham IRA, right down to the color of some guy's van. Well, then was right. What about the six? There's no mention. They've known the truth for the last 13 years. I think it's time we chased up a few bombers. As you saw, when the film was made, the six men were still in prison. It took until 1991 for the court system to finally say, whoops, they had the wrong men. Men who had served for 16 years. And it took more than another decade for them to finally get some kind of apology and compensation for all that time in prison. Three detectives were charged with perjury and conspiracy, but their trial was halted in 1993 on the basis of prejudicial news coverage. And finally, the real bombers have never been found. And that's our look at history and history on film. I'm Ann Medina.